Well, okay. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. I thank the organizers for the invitation. Um, okay, so I will be talking about uh, taking the localization uh, results and trying to learn something from holography about uh, these results. So this is work I've uh, been learning with my friends and collaborator, uh, Jeremias, which is a PhD student who has finished, Diego Correa, who is here, Alberto Faraji, Leo, uh, Bimal, who's a student of Leo, and Diego Trancanelli. Uh, okay, so what I will, I will be talking about is um, taking these localization results for the, these vessel functions that currently appears uh, in all the talks about uh, Wilson loops. This is a gauge theory result. This is something that you may know nothing about holography and compute. And then uh, Malda comes, tells you that there is a, a conjecture, and if this exists, then you would like to reproduce this result at strong coupling from string theory computations. So this is what I will be talking about and telling you about the issue. So the two sides of the of the this this is I will be talking most I will be talking completely in n equal four, but this is something that can be done in n equal four or in n equal six, where the two sides of the of the of the of the correspondence are precisely defined. Um, okay, so in this way we we will see the intricacies that appear when trying to get a number and make it match. So uh, I will be summarizing just a transparency on the SUSI localization. Then I will um, make a summary of the different Wilson loops that uh, appears in the context of these gauge theories. Um, then uh, Malda comes and tells you if you have something in the gauge theory, what, what is the relation to the string theory? So you have to know the parameters, then expand, and then see what we should do in the string theory side, and then what is the outcome of all this that we've been working on. Okay, so uh, exact results in, in, in any field theory are rare things. People, we usually learn uh, perturbative uh, computations, so um, it's not uh, common to have an exact result in all the parameters of, of a theory. Um, this is unusual, but if you have enough symmetry, this, uh, you may be able to compute uh, quantities in, 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 ex in, in an exact form, and this is what happens in equal four and in equal six. And mainly there have been two uh, techniques to obtain exact results. These are integrability, which has already been mentioned, and localization. Integrability typically um, works at the planar level, but there have been recent work by Pedro Vieira collaborators working beyond the planar. And locally, th these are like two situations uh, where integrability you can compute for any operator, but you have to be at the leading order in N, but localization allows you to compute, to compute for any N, but only for SUSI objects. And so depending on what you want to do, uh, what kind of exact results you want, you may use one or the other, or maybe combine them, I don't know. Uh, but we will be mainly discussing localization which relates to supersymmetry and supersymmetric objects that you can compute by the techniques that you may know because you are experts and have been uh, lectured last week uh, in very nice talks here. So I will start talking about the observables we want to compute. So this is gauge theory. You know nothing about holography. Uh, you are given a Lagrangian. You learn a technique to compute exact things for this Lagrangian. Uh, and there are particular observables that can also be computed exactly. Well, in particular, for the n equal 4, there is this Wilson loop. Uh, called uh, Maldacena Wilson loop. It's the, it's the Wilson loop we are used to that Diego was talking this morning. In the SUSI context, we have to add some 
coupling to the scalars in order for this to preserve some supersymmetry. So when you compute the vacuum expectation value of this object, is a, a quantity that, that depends on, say, two curves. The curves in the space-time, where you, the, the curve of the, of the loop you are uh, drawing in the space-time, and also due to the coupling to the scalars, you have to tell me along the curve, how does the scalar couples, how does the curve couple to the scalars in the n equal form? Uh, I think we all know, but here you have six scalars. This X prime is here to preserve uh, diffeomorphism invariance. So C is the curve on the space time. It can be time like, space like, null. You may need to add some eyes here. For example, for a null line, this is supersymmetric without adding this. Uh, N is what is called internal space, is how. Uh, the curve couples to the scalars along the curve, and this can be computed in many representations. I will be talking mostly about the fundamental representation, which is the, which is for which this object has a representation in terms of a string, as Diego was telling this morning. So, okay, here, these are all on the adjoint, but being in the adjoint, they, they they are expanded in generators. The generator can be put in any representation. So this is also a quantity that depends on the representation. Supersymmetry demands that then this n, which in principle is something in R6, should be on the, on the five sphere. And there is a particular relation between the curve and the internal space vector that has to be satisfied, has to be satisfied in order for this to be supersymmetric. This has been a, worked of a lot of people. Uh, and Nadab has made a lot of work along these lines. Uh, Maldacena, Sujon Ray, sorry if that I forgot to add him. Uh, bueno, and these guys that are here. Uh, okay, so now, you, what is the simplest Wilson loop you can look for? Straight line, okay? So you put a straight line, and you began doing computations. This was uh, nicely explained last week. You can do perturbative computation. There is a combined propagator. Nadab was talking about this combined propagator this morning. For the, for the straight line, this propagator vanishes. So, all the, so the, Wilson, the, the straight Wilson line has uh, zero corrections, and the vacuum expectation value is just one. This is independent of coupling constant. A rank of the gauge group or representation. The straight line preserves one half supersymmetry. This is jargon. This means that preserves 16 of the 32 supersymmetries n equal 4 has. Uh, okay, so perturbatively it's a cancellation between gauge and scalar propagators. As Diego Trancanelli was uh, telling us last week, when we pick the circle, and the vector coupling to the scalar is a constant. This is related to what Nadab was saying that he put phi one only in the coupling, in the in the in the holonomy of the of the Wilson loop he was computing. The Wilson loop is still one half BPS, preserve sixteen. But now the answer is non-trivial, and gives you this uh, Lagarde polynomial. Uh, this was conjectured originally by Ericsson, Semenos, and Sarembo, doing perturbative computations, as Diego was uh, taught in us last week. Um, uh, the vertices cancel, so they conjecture that the, the vacuum expect this, this operator should be given by a matrix model. Um, Nadab and Gross, this, they worked at the planar level, Nadav and Gross generalized, generalized this to the, to the non-planar for any n, conjectured this, obtained this Laguerre for the Gaussian matrix model, and then Pestum with the localization technique proved that what Nadav and Drucker were conjecturing in Semenov was purissimo. Okay, so once you have this, this is a very nice result, okay? Because this is exact in lambda and in n. So now you can expand it since, since this is an, an exact result. And now we are, we, we are having the, con, the, 
Malvacena conjecture in our minds, we can expand it at large lambda, and we can expand it in, lar in large n, and try to, to see what happens. If we expand these laggers, we obtain a series, we expand these laggers in one over n, we obtain this series, this would be the leading piece, this would be subleading in n, this will be given, say, by the simplest, okay, this is a one over n. Then when I explain how this is related to string wall sheets, oops, was it me? Uh, maybe it's because the power. Okay, I will, I will stay here in case. No, maybe it has a turn off after two minutes or this. Well, okay. So this will be related to a disk topology, a disk with a handle, a disk with two handles, etc. We will be mainly discussing this. That will be the disk topology, which is the leading the leading contribution in the string topology in, in, in the in the string topologies expansion. So this can be expanded in this, in different topologies, and then we can expand this at large n and we obtain this. What we would be aiming to reproduce is these numbers from a string theory uh, point of view, okay? So here you have all these. Uh, bueno, Diego said this last week. This result arises from, and it's similar to what Diego Correa was saying that the summation of ladder diagrams gives you these expressions. This is a one half. And now you can put an additional parameter onto the Wilson loops. Uh, and, and these are these one quarter BPS, eight SUSIs. And this corresponds to couple non trivially to the scalars around the curve in internal space. So when you put uh, theta zero equal to zero, everything vanishes and, and this is a fixed point. When you take a non-trivial theta zero, this is a curve inside the S5. Uh, this is a generalized Wilson loop, preserves some supersymmetries, and Nadab conjectured in 2006, I, I think, uh, that the result for this Wilson loop with this particular coupling was just the, the same as before, this, but replacing lambda by uh, lambda cos square theta. This was uh, checked by perturbative computations. Then uh, what Nada was saying this morning, Pestun did uh, some localization also for this Wilson loop, but a piece was not completely, as far as I understand, not completely fixed. But if you suppose that this determinant, instant, instant on determinant were one, everything seemed consistent with this conjecture. Uh, so we have the line, the circle one half, and the circle one quarter. Uh, in particular, uh, there's a particular limit for also for this Wilson loop that amounts to take theta zero to the equator. And if you take theta zero to the equator, you may see that this is going to give you one. And this uh, turns out to be also uh, an interesting limit. Okay, that was gauge theory. Then Malda comes and tells you, okay, if you have n equal four super young mills and you have this should be dual to type two b, in n equal to four you have a gauge coupling, range of the gauge group. The natural parameter is the tooth coupling. Why? Because if you make this uh, change of parameters and you re-express everything in terms of lambda and one over lambda, this naturally decomposes all the quantities you want to compute in this gauge theory in terms of planar and non-planar diagrams, and this naturally maps to uh, the topological expansion of, of, of the string. Um, and on the string side, one writes the Polyakov action, one has the, Diego was saying this this morning, one over alpha prime, you also have the target space metric, the target space metric depends, has an R square because it's the, the size of the, this comes out of the action, so you get an effective tension being L square over alpha prime, and this is a relation. 
these are the gauge theory uh, parameters, and they relate to the string theory parameters in this way. So now that I have an exact uh, expression in gauge theory, the natural thing to do is to re-express it in terms of string parameters, see what is the perturbative limit I can take in strings and expanding this appropriate limit and try to match. So, then you go to the string theory side, you, um, the string theory side, as I was saying, you have the target space, this is the string tension, R squared comes out, so the natural thing to do in the string side is to make a semi-classical expansion. The role of H bar is going to be played by this effective tension, so H bar going to zero, this, this is very big, so I have to take large lambda. Large lambda will allow to make classical plus uh, fluctuations over classical, over classical world sheet, and this is what we are going to do now. Uh, we are going to keep uh, N equal infinity. That amounts of what we are going to say, not to cut not to consider handles on, on, on the, on the worksheet. And uh, the, the remaining piece I have to tell you is what is a Wilson loop from the string theory point of view? The Wilson loop has a curve. The, as Diego was saying, the worksheet has to end on this curve. So this is the problem you have to solve. And depending on the curve you choose, two parallel lines, a cusp, a circle, a circle, you have different wall sheets in the bulk. Uh, I stole in this from many different papers. Uh, this is from Valentina Forini, this is from Nadab, this from the internet, this from Sarembo, and this from uh, Eduardo Vescovi thesis. So in the end, what you have to do is compute in, 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 in technical words the disk complete of the type two superstring with Ramon Ramon Flaxin with a precise contour attached to the boundary. So now you have all the pieces. So now take uh, the localization results for the one half, for the one quarter. And if you write them down, you will see different pieces, okay? This is the leading. Now you are supposed to expand that large lambda because in the large lambda you are expect to be able to reproduce this using string theory computations. You find different, different terms. This is the leading. Subleading, sub subleading, sub 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 subleading. Okay. If this is H bar, what is the meaning of, of, of all these terms? This is a classical thing. This logarithm, we know, we go to Coleman instantons and he says, ah, when you see a logarithm of H bar, this has to do with zero modes. So this kind of expected to be related to some zero modes, and these numbers should be uh, the value of the determinants from a quantum field theory point of view. So now we would like to see how this kind of, of, num, of, of, of we would like to reproduce this minus three halves and this one half log of two pi by computing determinants. Uh, well, okay, this is what is said here. The logarithm and this uh, three here of, this precisely, this one half logarithm of square root of lambda, this is precisely uh, amounts, if you go to all the numerology, this amounts to having three zero modes for some determinant. Nadav and Drucker uh, suggested that this three was coming from zeros of the Fadeye Popov gauge fixing determinant uh, in the string, uh, in the string uh, diff of gauge fixing. Okay, you go to chapter two of Polchinski where he talks about this. Uh, so, in order not to deal with this, what, um, okay, this work I, I will be talking about, this work that has been done with Leo, the collaborators, and uh, another group of Italian guys uh, working also on computing, on trying to compute this. In order to forget about the log of lambda and Sarembo as well, you compute this quotient. If you compute this quotient, if this is topological, it's not going to be there, so you don't care. So, if you compute the quotient of these two things, and you trust on the fact that this is going to be topological, this is a natural thing you want 
you would like to reproduce, okay? So you will have a leading. This, this will be the quotient of the, say, uh, classical surfaces, and this should come from the determinants of the fluctuating, uh, of the fluctuating fields of the string action around a classical solution. You mean this? The, 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 the argument is that the, the H bar is outside the action. So the, so, so the logarithm is of H bar. The cos theta is coming from something that has to do with the worksheet that if you, if you believe in this, because the, the argument was that the phi epopo riemann roch theorem has three for the disk, it's H bar. No, it showed up in the, it, it, when, you, when you see the expression, it, it came out from there, but it's, it has to come from the determinant. It, you will see, it, when we compute now determinants, you will see that it shows up by computing determinants. It's not solved, the problem. I will go on to that. Okay, so I think that now it, it I w bueno, okay. Okay. So what is the string partition function? This is the string partition function. Typically, you will have a normalizing. Ui. You will have a normalizing factor that you don't know much what is. If you expand to second order, you will have uh, the classical action, the determinants, the phi pop up. This is all we have. Oops. Just for not to vanish. Okay, so this is typical quantum field theory, perturbation theory. This is all the stuff you have inside. Uh, Nadav's argument with, um, with Gross was that this phi pop up that you go and see in Polchinski what is the form of this operator. It's a PP dagger related to the fixing of the DFO plus bile. Uh, then this that I was saying, riemann roch disk, the disk has three conformal killing vectors. These three conformal killing vectors of, of, of that operator correspond to the three zero mode, correspond to the three halves of the logarithm of square root of lambda that I was referring to. And this is topological. If I co question this with a, with a similar topology, topological string, I forget. Okay, so now I will go to the details. Any question? Because uh, I was asking this, uh, the argument, uh, it's, it's, it's a fancy argument because when you go to the type 2A in ABJM context, it doesn't show up to have the same kind of uh, three halves, although you have a disk topology. So it's not clear that the argument is true or not. No, no, he was saying the three halves of the log. If I, if I trust the three halves of the log, why don't you I say that? Okay, so now we go to the solution. We want to find a solution, which is a circle on the, S5, on the S5, a circle on the configuration space. This is at the boundary of ADS. We write ADS5, process 5. Uh, if you are lucky, you choose a nice... Um, parameterization of ADS. Uh, we did this. Uh, this is embedding. So the embedding corresponds to setting, uh, placing the string at the u equal to zero surface. So this is collapsed. u equal to zero, this is one, this is not there. And it's embedding all these hyperbolic slice on, AD, on ADS5. And then in, uh, for the five sphere, um, we put a non-trivial profile on this angle. This angle, uh, this three sphere is fibered over this angle. Uh, you plug everything into the machine. You find a classical solution. This is the solution, okay? So uh, rho is like the sigma coordinate. The angles are tau. This is um, wrapping all this surface. 
and it's also this tau at the same time you're wrapping here the angle on the on the on the ADS you are moving on this on this angle here on the five sphere note that we have put a fixed and, 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 and we sit at a fixed point inside this three sphere uh, okay due to the homogeneity of, of the S3, we expect these, these angles, the, the, the point of, at which we are seat on the three spheres, nothing should depend on that. So now, now we have the string solution. This can be shown to, to be supersymmetric. Um, looking at the supersymmetries of the uh, type 2B Green-Schwartz action. So now what we have to do is to compute the Onshell action. Ah, okay, before this. Bueno, oh no, at the same time. Okay, so if you have a surface, you look at the induced metric on the surface by when you, you put it inside ADS. What is the induced metric for this embedding? The induced metrics are uh, asymptotic to ADS2. This is in correspondence with uh, the symmetries we expect that the Wilson loop should have. This can be analyzed also in, a, in terms of symmetries. I, I won't talk about that. We, we did that in, in our papers. But the important fact I want to stress is that we, the induced metric can be written as uh, an ADS2 with a conformal factor. And this conformal factor, as you go to the boundary, goes to one. So it's like having ADS2 at the boundary and then a deformation inside, a smooth conformal factor which deforms ADS2 inside. So this is the geometry. It's a disk. If it's a disk, it's, it has three conformal green vectors. No matter what is the theta zero, this theta zero I'm placing here is just the boundary condition, which is, this theta zero is the theta zero, which is supposed to be related to the uh, gauge theory theta zero, which was parametrizing the, the circle inside the five sphere. Uh, we can compute the on-shell action, put this over here. Of course, if the, if, this, if the surface extends all the way to, to the boundary, it will have infinite area. This is very well understood how to regularize this. You essentially drop away this number, and you end up with this negative area after regularization. Now, you go here, e to the action on-shell, minus minus gives you a plus, and you find that the leading contribution map matches this thing that you have here, okay? So, in some way, we have found a, a wall sheet that um, has the same, the same supersymmetries than the gauge theory side. You can match the supersymmetry. You can, you can make a matching between the gauge theory supersymmetries and the bulk supersymmetries, and you can check them. Both present the same supersymmetries. It has the same area. So now we would like to do the subleading computation. This is one quarter, eh? the, the generic ones. M louder. Is there a factor no, the, if you take uh, theta z equal to zero. No, uh, they are measured with res what do you mean? The, the half BPS in this in this drawing means a point here above. Ah, it's, not it's, a it's a point and it doesn't move. Oh. So it's uh, a mu and phi six, uh, just a single one without moving. It's here. You put zero. Theta is constant all the way. In rho, doesn't change. Theta zero. Since I, since I am comparing between the okay okay. Okay, just, just to have an intuition on, on these geometries, as Samir was saying, the one half BPS corresponds to t equal to zero. The geometry is precisely ADS2. When it's precisely ADS2, ah, ADS2, it has SL2R symmetry. The three conformal in this particular case are three killing vectors. Okay, if you go to a particular coordinate system, you can, you can draw them. These are the three killing vectors. One, this is the d theta the angular, and these are the other two, okay? Uh, this, 
Notice that the, these, these killing vectors, they are killing vectors which their action on the, on the wall sheet leaves the boundary invariant, but the boundary moves, okay? It moves points on the boundary to points on the boundary. And then the one quarter, the particular I was saying, the, equator, the equatorial one quarter, when you put this angle to the equator of the S5, uh, well, it has this particular thing. Now, only one killing vector uh, survives, which is DD5, two conformal killings. But uh, something interesting happened in this case, and that's why I was mentioning. Because in this case, uh, these um, classical parameters that you are expected to give from a boundary point of view uh, become zero modes. The reason for these parameters to become zero mode is that when you go to the equator, when you place the boundary conditions, the boundary conditions at the boundary for the for the wall sheet on the, on the internal sphere on the on the internal space, you see that if theta is equal to pi over two, this cos cancels, so you don't have to give uh, the boundary conditions for this. It's similar to the kink in one plus one. You put go into the two to the two vacua, and suddenly the solution, a typical solution in a, in a second order differential equation is I give you two boundary conditions, the solution is unique, okay, except when you have zero modes. The kinks is you put the two boundary conditions and there remains the position of the kink. This is a similar thing. So we expect to have zero modes on the bosonic related to the existence of this feature for TT while pi over 2, and this is a sine equatorial loops. Let's go to the fluctuations. So now we want to expand around this world sheet, compute the operators representing the expansion, and then compute their determinants. Okay, this is there's a very nice uh, formalism to do this. Fluctuations are properly defined on tangent space. Uh, the original, the original a formalism for this was also developed by Nadab, Drucker, and Seitlin. Uh, and now you might have to do gauge fixing. Since we are at second order, it, kind, it is kind of irrelevant whether you do Nambugoto or you do Polyakov. Um, if you do Nambugoto, you go to static gauge, you look for the Faye Popov. This gives you a trivial Faye Popov determinant, and you end up with eight physical. Bosons and fermions um, uh, operators. This is, oh, sorry, I should have added here also the Italians. I, I put, I uh, know, uh, here I put them, okay. Um, the Italians, the Italian group. Or you can go to a Polyakov, go to a conformal gauge. If you go to a conformal gauge, you will find that the Faye Popov, but the Faye Popov is going to cancel. Ah, this is also a, a, an assumption which has been. Uh, worked out. You looked at the Faye Popov determinant and you look at the longitudinal fluctuations, and they are exactly the same operator, so you say they cancel. They cancel. But the boundary conditions, not being the same, doesn't mean that they should cancel. So, assuming that they cancel, you end up with the 8 and 8, and the operators we found were, similar, were the same as uh, this. Uh, Italian guys found. And then the kappa symmetry fixing gives a trivial contribution, so we don't care. Okay, so now we want to compute a functional determinant. If you want to compute a functional determinant, you need a differential operator, boundary conditions, and an inner product. The inner product is going to say to you which, which is the precise operator, because once you have fluctuated, you, you write down this. This is ambiguous if I put an M here, a, an arbitrary function here and here. So it's not clear what is the operator I, I am uh, diagonalizing uh, until I give you what is the precise measure on which I will uh, orthogonalize the um, Aachen functions. Good. So there's an important recurring uh, theorem that appears every time in two dimensions, which is this. What happens if I change them? How these two <laughs> determinants related by a bile rescaling, how do they relate? Okay, there is a formula, Schwartz 79, which is nothing but, hand-wavingly, the bile anomaly. 
if you integrate body parts, you may see that this is the, the, the typical LUVIL mode. So this is important because, um, as you may guess, in the end, we will make this kind of bile conformal transformations and they will vanish because the string is super symmetric and conformal invariant. Uh, okay, so this is one piece of uh, ingredient you need to, to know in order to compute the determinants because now I'm going to compute the determinants. So you go, you plug uh, the formalism of fluctuating strings and you end up with a bunch of operators, fermionic and bosonic ones. Fermionic, uh, this is the one quarter, so it's the deformed ADS2. So you, you, you can write them in this way, in this particular induced metric. I am assuming that I, use, I am using as a measure the induced metric on the world sheet. So this is the, the, the operators one finds. They are kind of Laplace operators with gauge fields on a deformed AD, asymptotic ADS2 space. Okay, this is the details. Uh, it is important to say that uh, the gauge field is smooth. It collapses smooth at the center of the disk. Uh, it vanishes in the VPS limit. These are just, okay, originally the, 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 the first guy who, um, Nadab, I think in, in, in their paper with Gross and Seitlin, computed this operator. Then Martin Kruczewski and Tirsiu tried to evaluate this for the one half VPS, and the Italians and us were computed the, this operator for the one quarter, and we tried to go on and try to compute the determinants. Uh, another important thing to say is that the fermions have chiral and non-chiral masses, and the, uh, this uh, non-chiral vanishes in the one half VPS limit. So these operators, in the one half BPS limit are just a free fermion on ADS2 with a chiral mass and Laplace operator on ADS2. Good. Oop. Oh. Okay. Okay. So uh, we would like to reproduce this term by computing the determinants, these determinants. We can do two things. We can Scale the induced metric to flat space because in two dimensions every metric is conformally flat. So we can write, that, write it as a, these operators as, as if they were in flat space, or we can use a set of functions. We have done both, uh, both tricks. This is Kruczynski uh, Tertiu, the Italian group, us, and this is Sarembo recently this year, Drucker Gross Cycling, uh, Buchbinder Cycling. Orini Cycling Vescovi. Oh, ¿Qué es esto? I don't know what this is. <laughs> ah, this is us. <laughs> <laughs> ah, because it's Jere. It's Jere Mia. Ah, they are, uh, because they, they, they have two surnames, so I put the second surname in, in lowercase. Sorry. Okay, so you, we have a. Um, let's, let's do the first, the first uh, idea to scale the metric to flat space. Okay? So. This is the induced metric. Take everything out and write it as a flat and forget about the conformal factor. Eh, you cannot do this. In principle, not, because the conformal factor, I've already showed a formula of Schwartz that shows that there, there should be an additional piece. OK, but when you, when you see the contribution of bosons and fermions, everything cancels. So yeah, I can do it. OK, bosons and fermions. The different contributions coming from this conformal factor goes away. How do I compute the determinants when I write them as if they were in flat space? Well, there's a well-known technique. Coleman did everything in the 70s. Because if you go to appendix of the uses of Instanton, this is already said there how to compute determinants in terms of, he doesn't call him, call it Gelf and Yaglon, but it's this trick of looking for an homogeneous solution of the operator you want to compute the determinant with particular boundary conditions. This is for 1D determinants. We are in a 2D situation. We cannot use this. Yes, we can, 
if we define the operator as a sum over the Fourier modes. Okay, this is a lot of delicate um, issues in order to see whether this is convergent or not. Okay, this is okay. This is what the Italians and us did in in in, in 2016. So we 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 cope with this with these things, and we ended up with the result we want to obtain plus a, a, an additional reminder, okay? Um, it's important to say that the potential di uh, potentially divergence in the Fourier modes uh, cancels, uh, and this is what we did, uh, looking to the SUSI multiplet, so this is correct. So we are having a, a, a thing that is worrisome. In the end, this will turn out to be related to the fact that we have changed topology from disk to cylinder. This is what recently Sarembo realized. Okay, so let's go to the second perspective to do a set of function computation. Uh, this has a long story. Cam Cam uh, Camporesi Uchi in the 90s uh, began studying this uh, set of function on on ADS, okay, maybe Samir knows better than this because he uses it every day. Then it was used in this bunch of papers uh, with and without agreement in different situations. For example, uh, in Buchbinder Seitlin and in, in this Forini Seitlin Beskovi, when computing using the heat kernel set of functions, since the space is homogeneous, you have an integration over uh, heat kernel KK, and you have to integrate over X, eh, pardon, heat kernel KXX, and you have an integration over X. Since the space is homogeneous, it doesn't depend on X, so this is the volume. The volume typically is put to minus 2 pi, although it's infinity. The argument is that if you take the, um, the volume, traca, 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 you find the divergence. The divergence this 2 pi was appearing this morning also in, in NADAPS, in one of NADAPS uh, formula. Uh, so we decided to work out this in the more difficult or more involved problem of a conformally uh, related uh, geometry to ADS with no change of topology. So typically we have this kind of, uh, look, notice this. When I wrote them down, I, this is the, the one quarter. The one quarter we have already written them in terms of some conformal on ADS2. This is pure ADS2 with a conformal factor here. So these are the typical operators we have, where these are just ADS connections. So uh, our idea was to write, to say that the determinants were the determinant in the scaled, in the bile scaled operator, plus the anomaly. Now the anomaly is not going to cancel and it's going to be a contribution since we are not going to flat space. Uh, to do the set of function, we do the same idea, logarithm of the 2D written as uh, oh, sum over Fourier modes. This is uh, tricky because now the sum over L is divergent. This problem was studied by Kirten and Dun in, the in 2006 for flat space. We follow their, 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 their ideas. They didn't consider gauge field. We introduced gauge field. Uh, typically, the set of function, I am getting faster because he's saying I have no time. So the set of function is uh, the determinant, as usual, is um, expressed in terms of the derivative of the zeta. There, there might be an ambiguity related to the uh, normalization scale. Of course, this is going to cancel. You can show by adding all the, all the pieces of the contributions. Typical, typical set of function, typical set of function uh, expressions for, for writing down a determinant. Uh, they involve a, a, a function with simple poles at the location of the singularities, Euclidean rotation, end up with this, what is called a just function, which is nothing but the phase shift of, of, of the problem. Note this resemblance with the Gelfand-Yaglom. In fact, the Gelfand-Yaglom can be deduced from, this, from these expressions. We end up with a bunch of expressions, with, with, with a 
finite, finally a finite expression for the bosons and fermion determinants, add, get the three halves, but a maldito reminder. And this reminder, I told you that Forini, Seitlin, and Vescovi had done a heat kernel computation that was matching to the localization result. In fact, our reminder is to an order that Forini, Seitlin, and Vescovi didn't compute it. So this is an uneasy uh, situation because um, we found Agreement with what has been done here, but we perform this to all orders in theta and theta zero, and this disagree. So we don't understand what this is doing there. Well, this is what's embodied, but I have no more time. So let's finish. Um, Wilson loop, boundary conditions, link order expansion matches, fluctuations with different techniques give the same result, so it's not a problem of the technique because you can, you can see it uh, matching. I didn't have time to, stop, to speak about Sarembo, but my name is not Sarembo. And um, there are a lot of things that are not clear, which are, because originally we started this project trying to, 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 to learn about supersymmetric boundary conditions on ADS and this kind of, of, of stuff, but this didn't work. Uh, the role of zero modes in equatorial uh, Wilson loop, it has an index, the three quarters, and this doesn't match with the type 2A. Uh, why is the mismatch? Uh, okay, and this is a student of Sarembo, which ended up with some results saying, okay, we ha this happened last month. It would be to have a better understanding. Thank you. <laughs>